Hi, welcome to video 14. Today we're going to talk about covalent molecules and what shape do those molecules have, what geometry they end up with. That is going to be very important because the geometry is going to dictate the polarity, which is going to be what we're going to talk about in the next video. And polarity is very important. It gives many of the physical properties of substances, whether it's their physical state or whether they're going to be able to um, dissolve in water or other uh, solvents. So let's talk a little bit about how we do this. As you may recall, covalent compounds are formed by the sharing of electrons uh, between atoms in order to have filled valence shells, and those electrons are going to be um, distributed around a central atom. The electron pairs, or electron domains, if you have uh, more than one electron pair being shared by two atoms, repel each other. So electron pairs or electron domains repel each other. Why? Because they are made out of electrons, they're composed of electrons, and electrons have negative charges. Negative and negative repel. All right? And so in order to minimize repulsion, atoms, molecules, will take certain shapes that will place electron domains as far as possible from each other. So let's look at some of the Lewis structures that I have drawn here for you guys. For example, in the molecule of nitrogen, if we just look at the nitrogen on the left side, we're going to see that there is one pair of electrons on uh, the far left, all right? And then there is three pairs of electrons being shared, all right? So it means that that nitrogen has two directions in which electrons are being shared, two electron domains. All right? Wonderful. If you have two electron domains, that means that your shape is going to be linear. All right? Why? Because it's the easiest or the most effective form in order to separate as far as possible two pairs of electrons or two electron domains is the furthest you can get them. If you have a molecule like the one we have in the center in red, you notice that around the central atom we have one direction, two directions, and three directions in which electrons are present. All right? There are no lone pairs in that center, anything like that. And so when we have three directions, we want to split them out as far as possible again from each other and that would be what we have here on the second uh, structure electron domain distribution and that's called trigonal planar because all of the atoms of all the electrons are going to be spread out in the same plane and we're going to see that that allows us to have an angle of approximately 120 degrees if it's exactly the same for all it will be exactly 120 degrees and finally, I want to show you another molecule, a molecule uh, in which there are four directions. So there's one here, two, three, and four. Four pairs of electrons going in different directions, and we want to separate them as much as possible. We are not going to stay in one single plane where we would have angles of 90, but by actually spreading out in three dimensions, and if we can do that, then we'll notice that we get this tetrahedral distribution, all right? And by spreading out, not in a flat plane, but actually in three dimensions, we can spread out and have an angle here of 109.5 degrees. So larger angles, more separation, and that's why uh, when you have four directions, instead of staying at ninth, you're going to go to this new shape, the tetrahedral shape. All right, so how do the molecules look? What is their effect going to be? Well, let's look at that. If you have molecules that are diatomic, made out of two atoms, the geometry is very easy. It's always going to be linear. All right, so if we actually try to circle that nicely, all right, we can see that the molecules will just shape half this linear shape, kind of like cigars, all right? Easy, straightforward. 
I'm actually going to get rid of those because they're a little bit large. Uh, didn't like how much. I'm going to do it with just a normal pen. All right. We get a general uh, linear shape for the molecule. All right. It, has, it follows the shape or the location of the atom. If you have three, three atoms in the molecule, a central atom and two connected to the center, you can have two shapes. It can be either linear or it can be bent, all right? Basically, like an angle. And it is going to be linear when you only have, again, two directions around and nothing else, no central um, atom lone pairs. But if you have two directions and a lone pair, or two directions and two lone pairs, it is necessary, it is important that you separate those lone pairs from uh, the others, and they are going to interact. They're going to repel the straight line that would be here, all right? Instead of having a straight line and having the A's here, all right, they're going to shift them down. And so that line, and I don't know if you can see it, will be bent downwards, all right? And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that line because this is how it really ends up looking, all right? So let's look at some examples, all right? If you have a molecule such as carbon disulfide in which there's only two directions, all right, and again, let's highlight those two directions, one and two around the central atom, well, the only shape, the only uh, form that you can look at that is going to be linear, all right? Because that will give us the 180 degrees between them, the furthest you can have those two domains. Each domain, in this case, being composed of four electrons because there's two uh, bonds between the carbon and the sulfur in each case. Now, if we have molecules like the ones we show further down, all right, I'm going to expand that a little bit, all right? In the case of the sulfur dioxide, again, let's just point to our directions. We've got one direction, two directions, and three directions. Three directions, if we recall, gave us a trigonal planar distribution of electron domains. Let's go back over here, all right? If we have three directions, now I'm going to change the color of that, we are looking at a trigonal planar distribution. So, this is how our electron domains are distributed around the sulfur. All right? The lone pair has to occupy space because the lone pair will have repulsions with the bonding pairs, with the bonding domains. And so it causes this angle to be approximately 120 degrees. Similarly, if we look at this other molecule over here, all right, the sulfur uh, hydride, all right, hydrogen sulfide, I, I mean to say, we got one, two, three, and four directions. Four directions, again, I'm going to go very quickly up, is going to be tetrahedral, all right, we're going to have that kind of strange three-dimensional shape, and we're going to distribute them in that tetrahedral both our atoms and our lone pairs. We want to make sure that those are still present and visible there. And so the angles that we're going to have between the actual atoms is going to be approximately, all right, somewhere in the vicinity of 105 degrees. It's going to be less than the 108 because those electron pairs that are not being shared push more. But the important thing to keep in mind is what is the overall shape. And I'm going to use, again, uh, a slightly... In the case of the sulfur dioxide, the shape of the molecule is only where it's around the atoms. It's kind of like a banana, all right, or a boomerang. Similarly, if we do the same thing for the hydrogen sulfide, here's where the atoms are. It's kind of that V shape. All right, here the angle is 
much more acute. Here, angle is larger, all right? And that's part of the shape of this molecule. So even though both of them are called bent molecules, there is a small difference in the two bends. One will have a larger uh, angle, one will have a smaller angle. Now let's go ahead and talk what happens when we have three atoms connected to the central one. When we have three atoms connected to the central one, we have to see how many directions or how many electron domains there are. In the first case, if we have three electron domains, we're going to have a trigonal planar distribution, just like we talked about for sulfur dioxide. Or if we have four directions, and only of those four, three are occupied by atoms, we're going to have what is called a trigonal pyramidal, because it forms a three-dimensional little pyramid. All right? Instead of being on the same plane, the, um, the X or the central atom is up from, uh, removed from the plane, and so it crosses that uh, top of the pyramid. All right? And so how do we do this? Again, it's all about doing the, lone, uh, the, the Lewis dot structures and finding out what uh, is the distribution of electron pairs around that central atom. For example, if we have a molecule of formaldehyde, all right, CH2O, that particular molecule will form this Lewis dot structure, all right? Uh, in that Lewis dot structure, we see one, two, and three directions. With three directions, we are going to create our trigonal planar shape. And so we're going to, again, one more time, have angles of 120 degrees. If instead we have a molecule such as um, phosphorus trichloride, when we do uh, phosphorus trichloride, all right, when we do the Lewis dot structure for this, we find that in fact we've got one, two, three directions, and a lone pair. That's four electron domains in total. And again, with four electron domains, we are going to then try to draw this tetrahedral distribution of the electron pairs. The actual molecule, and let me go back over here to show you the actual molecule in this first one, in the, um, where is it, right here, is where the atoms are. So it gives us a, basically a triangle shape, which is why it's called trigonal planar. But on our second example, we are going just where the atoms are. So it gives us like a little flat pyramid, all right? I know it's a little bit difficult to see. I'm going to move that outside for a second. So notice that we are not including the lone pairs here into part of our shape, all right? We are just taking this pyramid based on where the atoms exist or are located, all right? So maybe what I'll do is I'll try to do this drawing again very quickly, but with a highlighter, a different color highlighter. I'll do it with a yellow highlighter, so it's a little bit more visible. All right? And that is the shape of our molecule. All right? Uh, so if I move that out of the way, you can actually see the general structure of the pyramid. All right? Now, finally, when we have four atoms around the central atom at this level. Uh, in 10th grade, we're just going to focus on uh, the type of geometry that would give you tetrahedral. So anytime that you have four different atoms around the central atom, you're going to have a tetrahedral geometry. All right? And so uh, very rapidly, we're going to look at that. For a molecule such as silicon tetrachloride, one, two, three, four bonds, so four directions. And we're going to then build a tetrahedron 
around the silicon, and that is going to be the distribution. And again, in four in three dimensions, I'm going to try to do it just. Uh, we're going to try to connect those atoms, and it gives us a tetrahedron. It's this kind of three-dimensional uh, pyramid that has four sides, and each side is composed of a little triangle. All right. This table that you have here, I will hand out in class. Uh, it's a nice summary of this. The only change that I would make is I would have used total number of electron domains as opposed to electron pairs. All right. But other than that, uh, it's just really uh, very much a nice summary. If you have two directions, you're always going to be linear. If you're trigonal, sorry, if you have three dimensions, your distribution is going to be trigonal planar, but you can have two geometries, trigonal planar or bent. And if you have four domains, your distribution is going to be tetrahedral. And you can have one of three shapes, all right, which is octahe uh, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent. All right? So for homework, or to try before next class, try these exercises, and we will come back to talk about uh, polarity next time. Excellent. Thank you.